Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome you all to NPTEL online certificate course on immunology. Myself, Sudeep Ghosh, Department of Biotechnology, IIT Kharagpur. I firstly, I must thanks NPTEL, Ministry of Human Resource and Development for giving me this opportunity to take this course. And there will be another professor with me, Professor Agno Ganguly, who will take some classes as well. So, today I would like to introduce what I am going to teach and what is the immunology subject means basic concepts of immunology. Immunology is a study of our immune system. So, from the name you can understand that any system is not working as a single component. So, there are many components in the system. So, immune system means to protect ourselves from invaders. So, when one system works, all possible way to defend the intruders or the pathogens or any kind of foreign attack from our body which immune system can handle, they work as a whole. So, first we have to understand what are the components of the system how it works and how exactly they communicate between each other, everything is the system. So, I will go slowly and just for all the students I am telling, normally when I am taking the class, this is usually a third year course. So, already the student have the knowledge, basic knowledge of biochemistry, cell biology, molecular biology and genetics. So, a basic idea of all this subject is required to understand the uh, immunology fully and of course, to enjoy the subject. So, I hope whenever it is required, you have to go back if it is not there, you have to go back and study some part of the basic biochemistry, molecular biology, cell biology and microbiology. So, before I start, I will just try to show you some books, there are number of good books and I will show you some books and uh, give you as a reference. So, any of the book is fine to follow the course. The first is basic immunology uh, by Abul K. Abbas and Andrew H. Lichman. Second is immunology by David Malay and co-authors. Kubi immunology and the fourth one is immunobiology, I mean the picture I took from the different edition. So, you can have any edition or the latest edition is always better, because immunology is a very dynamic subject every day new research articles are publishing. So, every new edition you will find many new information which may not be there in the old book. So, latest ed edition of the book is always better. But for your information throughout the course, I will follow this book, Genoese Immunobiology. Most of my slides are from these books. So, if it is possible, you can follow this or whatever I will tell, maybe the figures are different, but it will cover the whole thing. You will find any, any immunology book, you will find the information. So, immunology. Immunology is the study of immune system, the study of all aspects of host defense against infection and also of the adverse consequence of immune response. What is immune system? Immune system means the tissues, cells and molecules involved in innate and adaptive immunity. So, those who are new to this subject innate immunity means in our body 
we have a general protection mechanism. I will come later in little detail. That means, any infection happened or any attack happened from outside, body has a immediate mechanism to protect that. That is innate immunity and adaptive immunity is when innate immunity fails, if the infection still exists, body has another system which take some time, but make a definite or specific weapon to protect the infection. So, it adapt or prepare a specific or infection specific mechanism to solve the problem or combat the disease or the infection. So, that is called adaptive immunity. Basic concept or theme of our immune system is kill the pathogen, but do not harm the host. This is most important thing for the immune system, because by same mechanism if one system can kill one cell, they should have the same capacity they can kill also our cells, but this is a very big issue that immune system knows that we are not supposed to I am talking about immune system they are not supposed to do any harm to our system if the immune system is working perfectly. So, what they are doing the first thing is protection against the infectious disease. Second thing they have to understand what is self what is non self and eliminate potentially destructive foreign substance from the body. To understand any mystery like how immune system works, how this thing works to understand any mystery you, ha you have to ask few questions what are these why, when, where, what and who. So, when we will discuss the immune system we will also try to answer these questions may not be in this sequence like why, when, where and who and what, but you will find the different I mean why immune system is working, when it is active, where it is working, against whom it is working. So, all these question we will try to answer through this course. Immune system they protect us from the attack, but not attack from these big animals they are not that much threat to our body, but this nice looking cute pet is always risky because they can carry some of the infection because we go very close to them. So, you have to careful, but real threat for our body or immune system is are these they are microbial organism like virus, bacteria, fungus, protozoan parasite all these microorganism which we cannot see, but can cause serious damage of our system or body immune system can see them. But this immune system or immuno immunity the concept or the notion of immunity came long time back in ancient Greece it was also known that those who survive from the disease confers great protection against it later. That means, if someone is somehow survive from a disease next time the same disease cannot make that much harm with respect to a person who is attacked by the for the first time. Okay. Another thing was variolation the inhalation or transfer into superficial skin wounds material from smallpox pustules. That practice is uh, known since 1400 in Middle East and China. So, that means the superficial skin of a smallpox patient if you inhale that gives you some protection. Edward Jenner knew all this thing and what he had observed that the relatively mild disease cowpox or vaccinia are seem to are uh, seem to confer protection against even more fatal disease the smallpox and many of you may know the story of that how he discovered the vaccine against smallpox. And he is the person who named this technique 
as a vaccine and it is still we are using the same term. In 1880, Louis Pasteur devised a vaccine against cholera in chickens and most interestingly he also developed a rabies vaccine that proved to be a spectacular success upon a first trial in the boy, in a boy bitten by a rabid dog and we are still using this vaccine till today. In fact, the beginning of immunology as a science is usually attributed to Edward Jenner for his work because he is the first person who demonstrated that we have a system in our body. That time it was not known where, whether it is a virus infected or something else, but we have a system in our body that can protect or that can generate a specific protection mechanism upon infection. So, let me go through uh, the smallpox or the vaccine. Smallpox vaccine he first demonstrated in 17 or last 18th century exactly I mean date wise, but World Health Organization declares that there is no smallpox in earth or smallpox is eradicated in 1979 it is almost 200 years it took ok. Because, because that time it was not known first thing is vaccine was not that popular and vaccine when developed people are not usually know that what is this how it is going to work. So, there are a lot of world health organization used to put lot of posters in the new years you should take vaccine first to protect yourself from the smallpox even in my school life when I used to go school around 1975, 76, 77 that time. So, there are a lot of poster in the lamp post in the wall that okay, if you find any smallpox candidate you will be uh, rewarded 1000 rupees or there will be a 1000 rupees award for giving a report. If your report is proved to be true then you will get 1000 rupees and that is I am talking about around 1975, 76. But so, that time who knew that there is no smallpox because the last person who survived in smallpox is Ali Mao Malin of Somalia. He is the last survivor of smallpox in 1977. So, after that there is no smallpox reported though smallpox virus may be stored in some laboratory or somewhere, but it is not in nature so far I mean no more new cases. As introduction in this whole course basically in the basic concept of immunology first few lectures what I am going to cover is the origin of vertebrate immune cells those who are responsible for immune system, principles of innate immunity, principles of adaptive immunity and the effector mechanism of immunity. So, the origin of vertebrate immune cells all the cellular elements of the blood including the cells of the immune system arise from pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells in bone marrow. So, they divide in bone marrow they divide or they produce two different kind of cells one is common lymphoid progenitor another is common myeloid progenitor. Common lymphoid progenitor produce four type of cells one is B cell or B lymphocytes T cell or T lymphocytes, NK cells or natural killer cells or innate leukocyte cells ILC. Similarly, common myeloid progenitor produce immature dendritic cells one way another granulocyte macrophage progenitor and megakaryocyte erythrocyte progenitor. So, this erythrocyte progenitor makes megakaryocyte and erythroblast, megakaryocyte produce platelets and this granulocyte are produce all the white blood cells we know like neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, mast cell precursor which is not known yet monocytes. Dendritic cells from immature it become mature and from this unknown precursor of mast cell cell produce mast cell and monocyte become macrophage in tissue. In from 
common lymphoid progenitor B cell in they all this they produce come into the peripheral blood they reach into the lymph node where I mean I will come later what is lymph node and how it looks. So, B cell T cell N K cell and I will see the innate leukocyte cells all of them are normally resides into leukocytes where they interact with the antigen and they become effector cells. B cells having a receptor on their surface they converted to plasma cells produce antibody upon infection. T cells they also have receptors specific to antigen by which they recognize the antigen they become activated they have different functions uh, they are called activated T cells as effector cells again we will discuss it later NK cells and ILC they do not have any specific receptor to recognize the antigen, but they are very similar to the cytotoxic T cell I will come again. So, before I go to detail there are few terms you will find in the whole lecture and initially these term may be new to you, but it will gradually in within the uh, discussion of the introduction part we will say what is what. So, NK cells and in T cells there are two types one is helper another is cytotoxic, cytotoxic means it can kill the cells. So, NK cells are very similar to cytotoxic T cells, but they do not have any recognition receptor and ILC the activated ILC they are very similar to different form of T cells. So, instead of helper cells also they have a different form. So, different ILC, ILC 1, ILC 2, ILC 3, ILC 4 they are very similar to different functions, but they also stay in lymph node to see the infection or to find out what is the infection is or what to do with that. So, this is a few slides whatever we saw in the last slides this is in the bigger format. So, there is no point you can go through and see carefully what I told so far. So, now I will start the principle of innate immunity. So, first thing I already told you that immunity we can divide into two major ways one is innate immunity another is adaptive immunity. So, innate immunity means immediate protection and adaptive immunity takes some time it makes specific arrangement or specific device or specific cell become activated to protect specifically that organism. So, our cell or our system immune system has a immediate protection mechanism that is called innate immunity. So, innate immunity there are few points are there I am just going through one by one and then try to explain again one by one. First is commensal organism because in our body you know that there are a lot of micro microbes stay inside our body like our gut which is full of microbes our nasal cavity mucosal cavity ear. So, all there are few microbes they stay inside our body they are beneficial it is not that they do not make any uh, damage of ourselves they are they can do, but they are very less. So, the commensal organism cause little host damage while pathogen damage host tissue by a variety of mechanisms. Anatomic and chemical barriers are the first defense against pathogens. The immune system or the innate immunity is activated by inflammatory inducers that indicate the presence of pathogens or tissue damage. The myeloid lineage comprises most of the cells of the innate immune system. I will come one by one I mean I will try to explain a little more detail. Sensor cell express pattern recognition receptors that provide an initial discrimination between self and non self. And number 6 sensor cell induce an inflammatory response by producing mediators such as chemokines and cytokines this is also two new vocabulary for immune system and innate lymphocytes and natural killer cells are effector cells that share similarities with lymphoid lineage of the adaptive immune system, but they are also taking part in innate immunity. So, com 
I just show you a few pictures before also. The microbes, microbes they vary greatly in size and lifestyle. Not only that, that nature I mean in the uh, lifestyle their nature where they will grow and how they will stay is also varies. Like virus all of you know they grow inside the cell. Bacteria there may be inside, there may be outside. Right? Here in this picture you can see the bacteria is uh, this is listeria, this is inside the cell and some extracellular bacteria, archaea and protozoa stay normally outside the cell, fungus and the bigger parasite like uh, ringworm or hookworm or helminthes group of them. So, body after seeing them immediately they try to kill them. How? How what is the component of innate immunity? First is the anatomic barriers. Okay. So, when anything comes the host can adopt three strategies normally to deal with the threat posed by the microbes. One avoidance, so make some mechanism, so you can avoid this microbes or make some resistance, so that they cannot grow or do the harm or tolerance. That means, allow them to grow or tolerate them. So, tolerance is normally not the way of protection, but sometimes our body do. So, anatomic barriers which is the first line of defense is skin, oral mucosa, respiratory epithelium, intestine. So, they do not allow directly the microbes to enter into the inside of the body. Then in blood if there is um, any bacterial infection or anything there is a antimicrobial protein present and there is a system called complement which is uh, you are going to learn in much more detail. Complement is a protein which is heat labile, but they non specifically can target bacteria and kill them. Okay. There are few innate immune cells that we just mention it, but that will go in a little more detail like macrophages they can eat them, they can do phagocytes and kill them. Granulocyte natural killer cells normally they kill the virus infected cells. So, these innate immune cells complement antimicrobial proteins anatomic barriers these are the components of immune system. So, when infection if it cross that part like infection somehow manage to handle this innate immunity they start growing then adaptive immunity come into picture. So, then B cells activated and produce antibody T cells help them to produce antibody if the infection is a viral infection then cytotoxic T cell comes into picture and kill the all virus infected cells. So, adaptive immunity part will come later. So, third point that uh, we are telling that the immune system is activated by inflammatory inducers that indicate the presence of pathogens or tissue damage. So, what are the inflammatory inducers? Inflammatory inducers are bacterial lipopolysaccharide, ATP, urate crystals. One thing we have to remember that macrophage is not only cleaning or uh, killing the phagos, um, microbes, macrophage also clean up the mess. Mess means all dead cells they are eating uh, up, after infection there are lot of immune cells they are dying, they also clean the mess. So, normal regular cleaning procedure also macrophages are doing. So, this back, but normally that do not the normal regular our body cell when the phagocytos are normal body cell after death the immune system is not activated, but when there is an infection our body can understand what is, which is pathogen which is non pathogen will come how. So, bacterial lipopolysaccharide ATP urate crystals sensor cells like macrophage new neutrophils, dendritic cells, they are the cells which can recognize which is foreign which is microbes and they go and eat them and kill them. Okay. There are some mediators how they understand. So, if one of the cells eat one bacteria they get activate understand that okay, something foreign comes. So, they release some chemicals or proteins which are the mediators like cytokines and cytotoxicity. Cytokines cytokines and also there are some cytotoxicity develops by uh, 
ILC okay, and the target tissue are production of antimicrobial where the uh, infection happen antimicrobial proteins induction of intracellular antimicrobial antiviral proteins killing of infected cells. So, somehow this is going to happen when any infection is happened in our body. It may be uh, infection can happen in the damaged tissue cut site of the body or through food or uh, direct contact in blood the phage of phages of immune response. Okay. So, what happened? So, there are I mean if you see or follow the table there are response typical time after infection to start of response and duration of response. So, innate immune response which is mediated by inflammation complement activation phagocytosis destruction of the pathogen which starts within a minute it can continues up to days, but the adaptive immune response there are several components you can see here like interaction between antigen presenting dendritic cells and antigen specific T cell recognition of antigen adhesion co stimulation T cell proliferation differentiation activation of antigen specific B cells which in turn going to produce antibody formation of effector cells and memory cells memory B cells and T cells both interaction of T cells with B cells which convert the B cells to plasma cells and memory B cells for the pro and produce antibody immigration emigration of effector lymphocytes from peripheral lymphoid tissue to organs like when exactly because antibody is going to produce in the lymph node that we will see later, but the antibody should go to blood and go to the target tissue where it will work so, elimination of pathogen by the affected cells and antibody affected cells means affected T cells. So, all these things the initial starts with our sometimes it initiates days sometimes few days, but it will continue or the duration of response depending I mean normally the weeks but it depends if the infection persist the response also you can see the response is also exist. And immunological memory is the maintenance of memory B cells and T cells because B cell and T cell recognize, recognize the antigen specifically by their receptor. So, there are few B cells not all B cells or all T cells are going to work to uh, fight against any specific antigen there are few B cells and T cells we will see uh, in later classes why I am telling few B cells. So, so, these B cells and T cells which was activated due to a specific infection they remember how their enemy looks like. So, that remembrance help them if the same pathogen attacks again. So, that they can fight much quicker way or much quicker time when antibody production normally takes 7 days 6 to 7 days. So, from day infection if the first day of infection you take 0 then antibody production takes 7 days. So, but the same pathogen if in attack for the next time or the second time it will take only 3 4 days or even less than that. So, that memory cell help them and this memory cell in many cases it may be lifelong. Okay. So, it days to weeks and it may be lifelong because there are many cases like the pox what we already told the pox once it is vaccinated it is very rarely one individual even for the chicken pox also very rarely you can find that one individual have chicken pox twice in their lifetime normally once or many of them many of us we do not have chicken pox because we have the vaccine. So, this memory many disease it is lifelong in some cases it is not that long. Okay. So, for today or this lecture it is in this is uh, here we stop I mean I would like to stop here today and in next class we will see how the components of blood or immune system or what are the components of immune system which plays a role in both innate as well as adaptive immunity. Thank you all.